Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times, brought to you this Monday, January 17, 2022, by Wilcon Depot, the country's leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer. Shop conveniently 24-7 with Wilcon Online Store. Just go to shop.wilcon.com.ph. For today's editorial, Ban on Child Marriage Helps Address Poverty. In signing the act prohibiting child marriage, President Rodrigo Duterte addresses two social problems, gender inequality and poverty. In the past, he has been criticized for allegedly being misogynistic and anti-poor, but his adoption of Republic Act or RA-11596 not only contradicts that portrayal, but also earns him some praise. The Philippine Commission on Women, or PCW, hailed it as a landmark law. Its executive director, Christine Rosary Yuzon Chavez, said in a statement, The law finally recognizes child marriage as a crime across the Philippines. It addresses legal gaps that allow this practice that threatens the health, well-being, and development of children. With this enactment, we can protect girls from being trapped in unwanted marriage, early pregnancy, violence, and other violations to their human rights and dignity. One in six Filipino girls get married before reaching 18 years old, according to PCW. That makes the Philippines 12th in the world in the frequency of child marriages or unions. In developing countries, some 20,000 girls younger than 18 give birth daily, according to the United Nations Population Fund or UNPF. About 90% of those childbirths occur within a marriage or union. Yearly, about 3 million girls between 15 and 19 years old resort to unsafe abortions, the UNPF added. Tens of thousands of girls in that age bracket die from complications related to pregnancy and childbirth, making those the leading causes of death for females in that age group. However, not everyone was pleased with RA-11596, which will be enforced in a couple of months after the implementing rules and regulations are finalized and published. Filipino Muslims, who are part of Mr. Duterte's political base, asked to defer the enactment. They argued that Islam sets no age requirement for marriage and that it would be hard to change that old custom. Of course, culture and traditions deserve respect, but there ought to be distinctions made between what is allowed and what should be done. Just because a religion allows something does not mean that it is encouraging it. Besides, society should embrace some changes, particularly when the benefits are so clear as in this case, and when the time comes, everyone regardless of the religion, should respect state law, which punishes child marriage with a fine of at least 40,000 pesos and imprisonment of up to 12 years. Eradicating Poverty In helping prevent pregnancy among adolescents, RA11596 also has development benefits. The Population Commission, in its statement, said marriages involving minors will also expose them to further unintended pregnancies, lead them to produce families and unions that are ill-prepared to face the challenges of rearing children, and lock them into the vicious cycle of intergenerational poverty. The UNPF says something similar. It explained that when girls become pregnant, they are likely to drop out of school, jeopardizing their economic prospects and excluding them from other opportunities. By contrast, girls who remain in school are better prepared for jobs, livelihoods, and life's other transitions. The new law is also consistent with the government's program to end extreme poverty by 2040. Economic managers aim to lift some 6 million Filipinos out of poverty by 2022, an objective that was realized early in 2018. Then, COVID-19 happened. Nearly 4 million Filipinos fell back into poverty by the first half of 2021, from the same period in 2018. With only months remaining in President Duterte's six-year term, his program to fight poverty was in peril. Seemingly undaunted, however, Economic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua of the National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, said this in a statement last December. In the final months of the Duterte administration, we will vigorously pursue the economy's full recovery to restore jobs and bring more people out of poverty. He added that the government programs, while understandably focused on containing COVID-19 and recovery from its economic impact, will not leave anyone behind. The enactment of RA-11596 ensures that adolescent girls are included. Even with COVID-19 still looming, NEDA remains optimistic about an early recovery. Regardless of political affiliation, 
every Filipino should back the government on that. And that's the editorial for Monday, January 17, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.